If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. Today is Friday, the Ascend program where we prove that the magic works. So sometimes I will do a reading with someone who has paid for a reading with me and I will give them the option to have it recorded and have the recording put onto the show. And that's the case with this reading. The person in the reading has offered to have it put onto the podcast. And so we are very grateful for that. So listen in and enjoy. All right. So was there something specific that you wanted you know, Kelly, I mean, I've started on this journey for about three years now, you know, and, and kind of just a little bit of history with it, you know, chronic depression and some things like that, you know, dealt with a lot of childhood issues. I'm sorry, I was weed eating, so I have stuff all over me. And um, went through, started down the road of mushroom journeys, which really opened my world way up and that's kind of transformed things so I've been yeah kind of going down this road for a while and it takes me in weird directions right and I've kind of learned to listen to it and so I come across podcasts and people and yeah so I just kind of follow that down I guess that I am going through a little bit of an issue right now where I I'm wondering, you know, about purpose, about where I go from here, you know, because I'm kind of in that later midlife time and, you know, things that worked for me in the past are just not working for me anymore. And so I'm just trying to find a way through that. You know, it feels really murky right now and I, I lack, um, I have centeredness I don't necessarily want groundedness. I like the idea of centered, being more centered than grounded, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't really want to be stuck. So centered has become more of a, and I feel I am that, but I do. I lack direction. I lack, I don't lack purpose. I mean, I'm a veterinarian by profession and, you know, that gives me a lot of purpose, but I guess I lack, yeah, what to do. And like, and, and to be honest with you, these last three years, right? Like things that I, the person I thought I was, I wasn't. And the things that I thought I wanted, I didn't. But really, I don't know what I want anymore. Like, I have no idea, right? And and I don't know if that's because I don't truly know who I am yet. Or, mm-hmm. you know, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. It's weird. It's hard for me to put into words. Yeah. So you're not looking for direction career wise. You're looking for direction personal wise. Yeah. I'm looking for direction life wise, you know, honestly, like, you know, what, what do I want? And I, and I, and again, I, I really, you know, I really don't even know, and I don't know where to even start. Yeah. Yeah. With kind of this rebirth thing, I guess. Yeah. It can be challenging, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So we're, we're looking for clarity, but more we're looking for, you know, how to figure out what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think I am going to, you know, what I like to do at the beginning of these readings is figure out which path I want to take in terms of what kind of read to do for you. Mm -hmm. um, What's going to be most optimal for you. In this case, I think that the seer read, the one that you signed up for is in fact, the most optimal for you. So okay. I'm going to, I'm going to do that. So okay. you do have like an hour and a half, right? Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure because sometimes it could take that long. Sometimes not so much, but so, okay. So here's your, your spiel for the beginning of this. Okay. So the first thing, first thing is, do you know about the chakra system? Uh-huh. Okay. So I don't have to explain that. Good. And then the thing you have to understand is that I'm going to go in looking specifically for blocks. This is not to say that you haven't done workplaces before, but I am looking for what's in the way from to you know from getting from where you are to where you want to be, right? And so I'm specifically looking for blocks. 
And you should not take it as a report card because the blocks are an indicator of where you are on this particular level. And if you've just come into the level, there'll be a lot of blocks. If you're just about to clear a level, there'll be a few blocks. It is not a universal report card on your life. It is just saying where you are in this level. Okay. So I have to put that out there because people will beat themselves up going, oh my God, there's so many blocks. Okay. <laughs> Don't panic. And okay. the, the blocks that we find are typically related to between one and three themes. And so they're usually around a specific issue. Okay. So, or two or three. Right. And so, you know, it's, it's, there will be a focus for you at the end of this. All okay. right. That's, that's the thing. What we're going to do is we're going to go through, we're going to identify all the blocks and I would recommend you take notes because you'll have questions and I'm going to be relating things back and forth. Right. And then the, at the end, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, these are the blocks that are that are a function of other blocks. They're a symptom of other blocks. So don't bother working on those, right? And then I'll look and see what's the order of operations for the best way to clear. And, you know, I'll make some suggestions along the way. If there's a quick fix for a block, I will give it to you in the moment. If not, then I'll, we'll talk about it at the end when I sum everything up and we look at the whole big picture, okay? Okay. So if you have any shields up, I would ask that you make a little Kelly sized uh, permission hole for me to come in for the purposes of this reading. And then, you know, when I come back out to seal it back up again, don't forget to do that. And so, oh yes, that's the other piece. Um, I knew I was forgetting something. The, when I am doing this work, I'm channeling. And so my memory will not be the same as it would if we were like having a conversation. So in 15 to 20 minutes after the end of this call, I will probably forget 80% of what I've told you because that's how channeling works. Um, and it's not in my brain, it's in their brain. So I'm just translating, right? Um, and so I can always tap back in, but the, the rule of thumb is ask your questions in the moment. You know, if it means stopping me in the middle, stop me in the middle, that's fine. And then I'll give you an opportunity to ask questions again at the end once we get there. Okay. okay. And if you have something after the fact, you know, remind me what I said, because <laughs> I will remember. And then I can tap back in and be like, oh yeah, this, 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 right. Okay. So that's not a problem. All right. Any questions about the process before we get started? No, I mean, I've listened to your podcast on a couple of these. And so I kind of know a little familiar with it. Okay. All right. Great. So do I have permission to enter your energy field for the purposes of this reading? Yes, you do. Okay. I will be there in a minute. Okay. Nothing to be concerned about outside your aura. So they're stopping me. I'm trying to go in and they're stopping me. So they're telling me, yes, there's nothing to be concerned about outside the aura, but they need you to know that every animal, specifically dogs that you've ever worked with that passed over is hanging out and offering help and support. So they come to visit you. Um, you, you look frozen. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just checking. Okay. Yeah, that just hit a, it just, that was very, yeah, it just hit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But they're, they're kind of, they, they're, what they're saying to me is that, um, that you didn't get a lot of love when you were younger. And therefore you're not very good at receiving it except from animals. And so they're there to love you up until you can learn how to receive it from other people. That's what they're doing is providing this blanket of love to surround you. And so anytime you're feeling unloved that you can just tap into them and they will fill you up. Okay. And they said, don't worry, we're here for as long as you need us. 
And like, there's no time limit. Don't panic. Okay. Okay, now I'm allowed to go into the aura. Okay. Ooh, okay, yeah. You're not kidding about the lack of clarity. Your aura is filled with like this black smoke. So like you can't see anything. All right, let me see what's underneath this. Hold on. Nope. Okay. So the image I got was almost a cartoon-like image. When I pulled the smoke up and out to see what was hiding underneath it, I got you naked going, ah, right? <laughs> Crossing your, your arms and like, but it's, it's sort of semi-cartoon-like. It's like, ah, I'm naked under here. Leave me alone, right? It's, 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 so there is a sense of vulnerability that's underneath this. Um, and so what that means is that there's, so you were talking about not being clear about what you want, right? There, the, it, it's not that you're not clear about what you want. It's that to be clear about what you want will make you vulnerable. Okay. It, it will leave you feeling like you're at a risk of loss. You're at a risk of change. You're at a risk of the unknown, right? And so that piece is what's creating the smoke because there's a resistance to those things because it might upset the apple cart sort of thing right so we'll see we'll see a little more about that as we get further into the process so let me see if there's anything else in here they want me to tell you no Okay, so we're going to come into the crown chakra. Okay, block in the crown chakra. Energy comes in just below the surface and then just is like, nope. It gets like this far and it's like, nope. Let me see about the outgoing. Basically sending out what came in. Okay, so the crown chakra is blocked. Let me check the root to see if you're in the energetic fetal position. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so the energetic fetal position is what happens when you live in trauma for long periods. It's it's a it's an energetic pattern that's meant to last as long as an attack lasts, right? So like, you know, 15 minutes max, right? Somebody's in your face, whatever time it takes for you to get out of there. And then it's supposed to release. But when you live in long-term trauma, where you feel unsafe for long periods, you can get into this place where you are in the energetic fetal position on a regular basis. That is just a default, right? And the challenge with that is that it leaves you without any way to gain energy other than by trying to pull it from other people or other places, right? And so the this one has a quick solution, okay? So I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> yeah, so it's the tree meditation. It's not a, it, it's a simple solution, not a quick solution. So this is a default pattern for you. So you're going to have to do the tree meditation regularly multiple times a day for weeks probably like six eight weeks before you reset this pattern okay and even so every time you start to feel a little bit threatened it's going to pop up until you repattern that too okay so this is this is a discipline thing some things are discipline things some things are mindset things some things are perspective things some things are transformation things this is a discipline thing okay all right. So the tree meditation you can find on, on uh, my YouTube channel. So you, you'll, you'll get it there. I'll, I'll send you the link when we're done. Okay. Okay. So that's an easy fix. Let's, let's do that. Okay. Now what else is up here? Hold on. Yeah. So with the crown chakra that's closed, you're going to find that talking to your guides is difficult. Okay. Because you know, that's how they talk to you guides, higher self, angels, 
all of them go through the crown chakra. If your crown chakra is blocked, you're, you're going to have a hard time having those conversations. When you do the tree meditation on a regular basis, that will open up for you automatically. Okay. All right. Now let's see what else is going on in here. Oh, big time mind on overdrive. Yes. La, 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 la. Brain on drive. Ah, trying to control everything, right? You know, keeping track of everything, looking at everything, keeping track of all your resources, making a plan and a backup plan and a backup plan for your backup plan, right? Yeah. So that is going on there. That will make it more difficult to hear your guides as well, just so you know, because your brain's full, right? And so meditation is a great solution for this one. It's a practice of letting, you know, letting your thoughts go. And yeah, you feel like, uh, have you ever done your human design chart? No, that is one thing that I have not done yet, but I've been looking into. Yeah. So I've done, a, I've done Akashic readings. Okay. Um, they have but a not human design. It feels like you have a active... So open and closed, whichever one, I can't remember which order it is, but one, one is the one where your brain is on all the time. Okay. And it feels like you have that one. I don't have that, but my, my friend Kathy does. And what she does to meditate is she says, you know, I'm, I'm in a river of my thoughts and I'm going to sink to the bottom of the river and watch my thoughts go by. They'll still be there, but I'm just going to watch them go by instead of investing in them right? So that would be my suggestion for you is that that's your, your visualization for that. Okay. Let's see what else here. Hold on. Okay. What's that? Hold on. Okay. So when I went to check and see if you were a natural channel and that maybe that was why the crown was blocked, I had you screaming at me, no, I'm not. I'm not. Don't even look at it. So that says you are and that there's a lot of fear around it. So I would say that you know, the very first thing that you learn in any channeling class is how not to channel, or it should be the very first thing you learn. <laughs> um, and uh, so I, I would highly recommend taking a channeling class uh, because I think that's why, you, that's part of the reason why the, the crown chakra is blocked for you is that you are desperately trying not to channel. And so learning how to not do that in, in a way that is healthy for you rather than blocking your crown chakra would be super helpful because you know you can channeling is basically possession with permission right so you know learning how not to channel is learning how not to get possessed without permission right and that's really what the defensive thing is about so yeah, i've never had anybody yell at me with that before that's interesting so three thousand of these i've done <laughs> So, you know, why not? Um, okay, let's see what else is going on in here. Okay. You definitely do not have a blocked masculine. You are structure upon structure upon structure. So you've got that going on. The I would say that you're you're a little over over strong in this area. That it's a <clears throat> a safety mechanism for you to have the structure to like be like you know exactly how everything's going to go safety mechanism and i'm going to bet that when i look at the feminine and the root chakra that will actually let's do that now okay so i'm seeing that the feminine was under balance but it feels like you've been doing work on it and so that's that's better than i had anticipated based on what i saw in the masculine so well done well done thank you it has <laughs> that has been a focus <laughs> yeah. yeah i can feel that so okay all right let's come back up into the seventh chakra here and see if there's anything else i need to know okay 
Okay. So they're saying that there's some trust in the universe issues, which is weird because that's usually a six chakra thing. There's okay. So that's related to the crown chakra stuff. Uh, the, the closing of the crown chakra is the, the lack of trust in the universe. So we'll talk about that more specifically in the sixth chakra because it's, it's an, it's an echo here because it doesn't live here, but it's impacting here. Okay. All right. So let's come down into the sixth chakra. Well, anything else here, guys? No. Okay. All right. Sixth chakra. So third eye, we're going to do transmitter and receiver first. Okay, transmitter goes out just fine, all good. Bring stuff back. It's a little block. Filters. So, your the the coming back of the transmitter is actually filtering out information. So it's like you're getting information, but not all the information. It's it's filtering out anything that would be conflict creating or difficult for you to say or you know anything that would be uncomfortable for you to mention and things like that so you're not getting all the information you're only getting the stuff that you would feel comfortable saying let's look at the receiver Yeah, receiver is not receiving. So the receiver is what you think of as your intuition. Okay, it's a picking up on things in the world around you, just sort of random thoughts. And it's like, oh, think of somebody, they call you, right? That sort of thing, right? This one's not really, it's not really doing much. And that's again, related to the lack of trust in the universe piece. So we're gonna, we're gonna look at that. Let me just go in and look at that now, because that's relevant in a big way here. You got two places where it's playing out. So Okay. All right. So there is a railing at the universe. It's like at the universe, right? Um, everything that's that that happened in your childhood. There's there's like this anger that's in there, that's saying, you know, I was you know I was supposed to have a good life, and this is not what I what I was supposed to have, and and so you know the the work here to be done, the invitation is to recognize that you chose this life for a reason to bring you through these situations so that you could stretch your container. And yes, it tore and left holes in the container while it stretched it, but it stretched it in, the, in ways that it would not have been stretched had you not been challenged, right? And so, you know, it made you bigger. And yes, there's healing work to be done now, but it, it, it was necessary in order to get you to the state faster, right? So you could get there eventually, but it would take many, many, many lifetimes. Whereas if you pick a life where things are challenging, it gets there much faster. Okay. Um, so there's a, the challenge here is that when you get angry at the universe, because we are all one, right? When you get angry at the universe and the universe is you and you are the universe, you're angry at yourself too. And this can cause depression, this can cause anger, this can cause lack of trust in, in yourself in terms of, you know, you, you can't make decisions, things like that. Um, and it can, it can cause you to get pretty stuck, right? And so it's important to release this and to be able to step into a place of, you know, yes, these things in my life sucked, and I wouldn't be the person that I was if they hadn't happened. And, you know, am I happy with who I am? Am I happier now than I was when I started? Probably, right? I may not be fully happy with who I am yet because I'm still in process, but I'm, I'm moving in the right direction. I would not been, have been inspired to do these things had I not had these experiences, right? So you, to be able to say, you know, with every challenge comes a gift, right? And so when you can pull the gift out of the situation and say, yes, this is the gift I received, then the challenge isn't as painful to remember, right? Because you can see the gift that came out of it. You can separate from it and not be engaged in it and 
be able to look at it from a higher perspective and go, oh yeah, okay, that was necessary, right? So that would be the invitation. There's also, there's also pieces that I feel like came in when you were, have you done law of attraction work? It, so, it feels like you tried to do some law of attraction work that didn't work out for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and you took that as evidence that the universe wasn't on your side, right? Correct, yeah. 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 So the, the, the challenge that nobody talks about with law of attraction. Okay. So the challenge with law of attraction is that it is limited by your belief structure and you already had a belief structure that you can't trust the universe. And so when you try to do law of attraction work and you don't trust the universe, it's not going to work because the universe is going to go, oh, your dominant thought is that you can't trust me. So anything you've asked for, I'm not going to deliver because that will deliver the dominant thought that you don't trust me. Right. And that's the challenge. Right. So the, so here's, here's your, here's your, here's your new mantra. I don't have to believe. I just have to suspend my disbelief. Okay. Because, you know, when we start, it's hard to believe, right? But suspending your disbelief, you do that every day when you watch a TV show or a movie, right? We suspend our disbelief. We buy into the world that we're watching, buy into the world that you're watching, suspend your disbelief, and then just wait and see what happens, right? Don't be, don't be putting the universe to the test and go, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to try this. And then you're going to, we're going to see if it would, okay, that's that you're still working with that dominant thought, right? <laughs> that's still a dominant thought of disbelief, right? <laughs> so, how, how did you know? I knew I just, did. I'm psychic. <laughs> that's, that's, that's why we're here, right? <laughs> So, so, you know, the, the key is to, to be with it in curiosity, not in prove it. Right. So curiosity is, huh, wonder if this works. I don't know. Let's find out. I'm going to try it and see what happens. Right. And then to expect it to return to you, right. To expect whatever you, you're doing. Pick something small initially because it will not challenge your, your mindset as much, right? It is just as easy to manifest something big as it is something small, but it is much harder to believe in manifesting something big than it is manifesting something small, okay? And so the belief structure is your challenge. So let's go with what it's easier to believe, right? Something that you could poo-poo away if you chose to, and then you will allow it to arrive, right? If you want to just go, oh, well, that doesn't count. It's a coincidence, right? Just do it like 50 times and eventually it will not, you'll be like, well, shit, that can't be a coincidence, right? <laughs> okay, that's the way you do this is lots of little things, right? That's the easiest path because otherwise your brain is going to be competing against it. And the, the challenge... I, so I tend to attract a lot of really smart people and the, the challenge with really smart people is that we have this really like hardcore attachment to reality, quote unquote reality, right? This has been my biggest challenge in everything I've done magically is my attachment to that because we're always indexing and cataloging and, and everything, the reality, right? So because we're so invested mindset wise and, oh, this is here and that's there and this is, and these are connected in these ways, blah, 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 right? All of that, we have a hard time admitting that this is an illusion. This is a VR game, right? It is the, the VR game called earth, right? <laughs> And we, we have a hard time admitting that. And, and when you can't admit that, you have a hard time believing in the law of attraction, right? Or any of the universal laws, right? So this becomes its own thing. And so doing small bits and pieces helps you to, you know, overrun that mindset of, you know, I, I know what everything is and everything is solid and because there's a safety issue in there for us right it's like well if everything's an illusion then what's behind the illusion and how do i how do i protect myself <laughs> right there's that's not your problem right now 
Okay. I, I, I mean, yes, it's your problem to believe that and to let go of it, but, but honestly, what happens behind the illusion is not your problem right now. Okay. But I want to know. <laughs> I know, but you know, think of it this way, you know, you've got an entire spirit team in the background and their job is to make sure that you're good here. And, you know, you, so, so let me give you the mindset on this because the, maybe it'll help you wrap your head around it. So when we're here, we are also there. Okay. Because we are all one and we are in the eternal moment of now. So we are in all of our lifetimes at the exact same time. We are in all of our non-lifetimes at the exact same time. There is no time and space in the other dimension. Okay. And so your consciousness is greater than this life. And so it is taking care of what's happening over there while it's being here too, because we are much bigger than these current brains can hold. Okay. So you're good. You're golden. I don't sense a belief structure there. No, I felt it. I okay. felt yeah, I did feel what you were you were saying with that. I mean, I think that you're right as somebody that wants to be so intellectual and so in my head, right? And it, and it probably is a control thing of, you know, if I don't know what it is, then I don't have control over it. Right. Does that sound right? Yep. Yeah. And so, you know, the key is to be able to step into your knowledge that you are ultimately adaptable and you're a survivor. And therefore, uh, anything that shows up, even if it's outside of your purview, you'll figure it out. You're smart. You got this. You can make a plan in under 30 seconds. Hell, you can make a plan in under five, right? You've always got a running list of all your resources available to you running in your head. You're good. Anything that comes, you got it covered. You'll figure it out. Okay. So that's how you get out of the fear of not being in control is to acknowledge that you are a badass, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let me see if there's anything else in this universe trust thing. Hold on. Mm, okay. This goes back to a past life too. So killed for your gifts, big surprise, and lots of people, okay? And, you know, 6 million women were killed in like the 1600s or something from the, I think it was from like the 1300s to the 1600s. Anyway, all killed for our gifts. Yay, happy, joy, right? And so you took that as a not trust in the universe thing um, when that happened. And so that's actually carrying forward as well. So you, you remember 9-11, obviously. Do you remember feeling the shift that happened in the planet when that happened? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. It affected me so much more than, than most people around me. And yeah. it, was, it was seismic for right. me. Yeah. And and still is. And it is, I've always wondered why, even though I had no direct. Connection to that, why that event was so. Was so seismic for me. It didn't make, it doesn't intellectually make sense to me why it was. It was an, an energetically pivotal moment in the, in the energy of the United States. So that's why you felt it is because it was a massive shift in the energy of the United States. And it changed, it changed the course of history because it brought in place, you know, a lot of the stuff with the Patriot and stuff like that, but, but it was that, and the people who were in that were part of the shift, you know, the, the ones who, who stayed, who were there, who died in the the collapse, um, they were part of that transition, right? There was a shift that was needed in the timeline and they participated in that when they came into this life, that was part of the plan, right? That the, the, the 
purging that happened over those hundreds of years was also a shift in the timeline. And those who came in and had that experience were part of that shift in the timeline. And so they, they participated, you know, that was always part of the plan, right? You got to die somehow, right? If you're going to die in service to the cause of transitioning the planet. Okay, fine. You know, so the, that is not a universal betrayal that was, Hey, I want to be part of something bigger than me. And I'm going to come in and join that. I'm going to be part of that larger context. Right. And so I'm, I'm contextualizing that for you so that you can let that go. Okay. And see if that's clearing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Hold on. Let me look. Okay. No, that's everything for the trust in the universe piece. Now let's look at the power piece. Yeah. So you've got a lot of refusal to admit your own power. Part of that was the past life thing and like not wanting to be killed for your gifts again. Again, I say you've got to leave the planet somehow, right? So what does it matter if it's for your gifts or something else? Nobody gets out of this life alive, right? So <laughs> there's that. And then, yeah, there's the fear of your own power piece is also tied up in the, in, in the lack of trust in the universe, because when you don't trust the universe, you don't trust yourself. And so if you can't be trusted with the power, you won't give yourself access to it. And so there's, there's, it's also a well of rage that you've got, but you sublimated into depression a lot too. So you're like, sometimes it'll go off. And sometimes it's like, I'll just beat myself up until I, I fall down. Right. And so the, one of the things about it, having a well of rage is that it, if in inherently good people, <laughs> um, they will take the well of rage and use it as an excuse to not give themselves power because if they had power, they'd lay waste to the world when they have those blowups, right? And so, you know, there, there's this, when you won't give yourself your power because you're afraid you would lay waste to the world, there's an inherent belief structure that starts to form that you're not a good person, which is exactly the opposite because actually if you were not a good person, you would not keep yourself from that power. You'd just be like, I have more, right? <laughs> And it would be fine, but it's only because you're a good person that you keep yourself from the power. Right. So, but, but the, the inherent belief structure forms in the subconscious because you're like, I can't be trusted with this. And if I can't be trusted, then it must be because I'm not a good person. Right. So that there's, we do weird things to ourselves inherently in our brains, right? Because thoughts get twisted, you know? And so this is all sort of going on in your, in your mindset right now, not a quick fix on this one, but we can talk about it at the end. Okay. 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 All right. Anything else in here? Yeah. Not a big surprise. Creativity usurped by the mind. Yeah. Your mind's on overdrive. You want to do everything in your head and, and the creativity piece is in the second chakra and it requires that you be with it instead of like think it to death. And so that's, that's going to be a limiting factor for you. What I would say, if you want to practice being in your creative self, I would play with some finger paints and like finger paints with no intention of what you're doing. Right. So don't decide what it's going to be before you start putting paint on paper. And in fact, try not to decide what it's going to be. Watch it evolve. And the reason I say finger paints is because you can't be nitpicky about how they show up, right? <laughs> if you're using actual paint brushes or, you know, pen and paper, you can, you can be like, ah, oh, that didn't go where I wanted it to go. Uh, with finger paints, it's kind of just going to be all over the place no matter what, right? So. If you really hate finger paints, try watercolor because that always goes all over the place too. It's a, it's an exercise in being with what is right. Okay. 
all the watercolor you're going to try and engineer how to put the paint on the paper <laughs> exactly the way you want it. <laughs> Finger paints it is then. <laughs> Finger paints are better. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going, I'm watching you do I'm like, oh no, that's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Are we done in the sixth chakra? Yes. Done in the sixth chakra. Let's come down to the fifth chakra. So let's get a sense of your self-expression. Okay, nothing. I got a whole lot of nothing. Look at my face. See my mouth? Barely open. No energy coming out. No stretch forward in the neck, even trying to get it out. Nope. Just a whole lot of nothing. There's like, you're like, nope, not expressing myself. Mm -mm. Okay. This feels like a vulnerability issue again. Um, let me see. Yeah, definitely got some hiding true self, unwilling to be seen stuff in here. Yeah, almost like you're trying to be invisible. Yeah. Yeah, because if you're not visible, you're not able to be seen to be attacked, right? You're not. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like you can be a, in a room full of people and nobody would see you. Yeah. Yeah. And I like it that way. I know. I was going to say that's an intentional thing. Yeah. And uh, it's obfuscate, right? It's how do I not let anybody see me? I had a friend who used to do this. He had a brother who used to beat on him as a child and he, he could like disappear completely. And I finally was sitting there trying, been trying to find him in a room for like 10 minutes and I couldn't find him. And I was standing behind this wingback chair and, uh, you know, looking out over the wingback chair with my hand on it. And I was like, mm, he's got the obfuscate on. And I was like, obfuscate off. And he was <laughs> sitting in the damn wingback chair that I had my hand on. <laughs> okay. So you have that same skill. Okay. You could do that and have me not see you at all until I like purposely overrode the obfuscate, right? You have that ability, which is a highly developed masking ability. And so it is a, do you ever read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Uh -uh. Okay. So they have this thing in there. They're like, invisibility is really hard to find. <laughs> really hard to create. However, somebody else's problem field is super easy, low energy thing to create. And it's like, you know, people will disregard because it's somebody else's problem, right? It's, it's, it's supposed to be very funny, but it's also very true. Right. And so you, you, you're using that. It's like, Oh, no, this isn't relevant. Right. Just disregard. It's, it's not quite a squirrel. Right. <laughs> but it's, it's a, nope, don't look here. Not relevant. Right super helpful. And especially if you ever got stalked, right. But, uh, in the long run, it is, um, going to ultimately. So when we talk about underlying belief structures, right. And how you manifest your life, right. Your life is manifest based on your, your underlying core belief structures when you are living with this energy of masking, there is a way in which you are telling the world you are not safe. And when you tell the world you're not safe, you will find all sorts of reasons to not feel safe because you will be manifesting them because you are creating them within this belief structure. Okay. We always have to be careful about what we take pride in and what we and what we engage in regularly, right? This is one of the reasons why I tell people who have been raped to not engage the survivor side of it for long. I'm like, yes, you have to go there initially. But you need to get out of that as soon as humanly possible because otherwise you will draw to you more things to survive when you hold a survivor as an identity, right? So you need to be very careful with that, right? So I feel like that's, you know, relevant to you, not necessarily from that perspective, but from other things, right? Um, and so 
you know, this is about stepping into a place of, of, of just saying, I'm good, I'm okay, everything's fine, right? And just resetting that, that vagus nerve response, right? So have you ever tried vagus nerve reset? No, but I've been hearing it more, obviously. I think it's more, so it's been something I wanted to look into, you yeah. know, because I do feel like I live in a constant state. I, I, I don't even necessarily call it fear, but it, it is a constant state of hypervigilance. How's that? Yeah. 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 Vegas nerve reset will help a lot with that. So you, you should be able to Google it. There's a ton of different resources on it. That'll show you how to do it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let me look. Hold on. Okay. So there is some people pleasing communication that you participate in. It's not all the time. Um, but it's a, I'm going to tell you what you want to hear just to get you to go away thing. Um, and the challenge with that for you is that every time you do that, you stop trusting yourself to speak your truth, right? It, it, it's a problem. So, you know, you, you need, you're doing it a lot is what I'm saying. And the a lot part is the problem. Every now and again, we all have to look at somebody who's being unreasonable and just tell them what they want to hear so that they will go away, right? That, that's true, okay? Um, but you're doing it enough that it's actually impacting your trust in yourself. So I would, I would really question whether or not it's necessary every time you're doing it, okay? All right. Um, anything else here? Hold on. Okay, that's everything. All right, let's come down into the heart chakra. Yeah, okay, so the heart chakra is armored up. I don't think that's news to you. The, you do have a bypass for the animals that you work with. <laughs> There's a bypass there, but it's, it's shut tight for everything else. Yeah, you've got some betrayal going on in the chakra. And it feels like the, the universal betrayal that we were talking about. So that's when you, when you do the work that we've already talked about, that should, should um, dissipate. Um, is that true? Hold on. One level. Uh, yeah. Okay. This is past life though. Yeah, is it okay if I pull this one out? Please. Okay. Yeah, you literally got stabbed in the back in the past life, and that's where that betrayal came from. Stabbed in the back by a friend, literally. Um, so let's pull that out. All right, and then is that everything for the betrayal piece? Yes, it's just the universal stuff now. Okay, good. All right, so lots of grief. Lots and lots of grief. Okay, so here's the thing about armoring up our heart. Okay. When you armor your heart, what happens is you start to manage your emotions with your mind. You start to try and rationalize them and explain them away and think them through. And you're not actually processing your emotions. You're just thinking them to death until they go away, right? Or until you can stuff them hard enough is really what it comes down to because they, they don't go away until they get felt. That's the thing about emotions. And so one of the challenges that happens when you armor up is that you're not receiving love. And so because you're not receiving love, your subconscious mind, your inner child starts to believe that you're not worthy of love. You're not lovable because you're not receiving any. And therefore that must be why not realizing that it was a choice to shut it down. Right. And so it creates this self-created belief structure that you're not lovable, that, that isn't based on anything other than the fact that you're not receiving love, 
okay, which is something you chose not to do because it came with all kinds of crap attached to it, right? It's like, mm, you know, I'll, I'll love you this much if you love me back or I'll love you and then you owe me, right? And, and to not receive the obligation that came with it, you just were like, screw it, I just won't receive it. If I don't receive it, I don't owe anything, right? And then that begins a pattern for you of believing that love is transactional. I'll give you this much, you give me that much, right? Because if I don't receive it, then I don't receive the obligation is an inherent assumption that the, there is something owed for the love that's received, right? That's why you love animals so much is because you, they, don't, they don't think you owe them anything, right? So there's that, right? So the, the, the inner belief structure of not feeling lovable and the inner feelings of not receiving love all add up to being sad a lot. There's a lot of grief that comes out of that. It's like, oh, I, I you know, and especially with the betrayal by the universe, it's like, you know, oh, I was supposed to, I'm supposed to come in. I was supposed to experience all this love. And, and, you know, in universal source, we do, we get love universally all the time, right? And so there's just this inherent grief of not having it available, right? And so when you start to open this back up, what's going to happen is that you're, every time you feel loved, you're going to cry. And that's because every bit of love that comes in squeezes out some of that grief and it comes out through your eyes, right? So it just will, I mean, for me, it was like two years of it just coming out periodically until it finally stopped making me cry every time I felt loved, right? So the, you know, there's, there's work to be done around opening the heart is really what this comes down to, okay? So, you know, that's, again, a bigger piece. So we'll talk about that at the end. So we'll see big, big picture stuff together, okay? All right, now, coming into, is there anything else in the chakra? Hold on. Yeah. So the, the receiver is shut. The, the, the giving out love is there. It's limited, but it's there. And that's because you kind of feel like there's only so much to go around. And so you only have so much to offer because you're not getting any back in. Okay. So as you open this up, that will solve itself. Okay. So when you have more, you'll have more to give. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's everything there. All right, let's come down into the third chakra. Let's look at your identity first. Yeah, not, not a surprise. When your glamour was that strong for the invisibility, I had a feeling we were gonna have a really strong glamour for the, for the uh, identity piece too. Uh, glamour being the energetic mask, right? And you've got that, you've got like this, look at me. I'm perfect. I'm perfect. Everything's good. I got it all under control, da, 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 which professionally I understand you need to have, but it's everywhere. Okay. So it's, it's that, it's that whole thing to the point where you kind of believe it too, right? It's, it's, you're, you've bought into it so much that it's like, oh yeah, this is who I am. And it's like, I'm looking at it and there's a little man behind the curtain pulling all the wheels, you know, woman in this case, but you know, I'm referencing the Wizard of Oz, but yeah, so there's, a, there's all of that, right? So, you know, the, the piece here, there's an almost feral need to be perfect, right? It's, it's like survival level need to look and be perfect. And that creates a huge amount of inner abuse for any time that you are less than perfect. And the piece here for you is to recognize that you are human and that that's allowed and in fact encouraged so i i had this same thing and 
what I discovered was that I trained people to have unreasonable expectations of me and that because I had them of myself. And so anytime I made a mistake, it was horrific to everyone around me. And, but, you know, somebody else could make the exact same mistake and they would have no repercussions at all because they had trained people that that's, that they were human. Right. And I, I was just floored by this, but I realized that that was actually me training them to expect that of me. And so, you know, they felt betrayed anytime I made a mistake. And it's also because I was so hard on them because I demanded very high level things of them, even though they were less than what I would demand of myself. So I thought it was reasonable, right? But it wasn't, <laughs> it was still unreasonable. It was just less unreasonable than I was with myself. And so, you know, when, when I was less than perfect, they would take great glee in pointing it out to me, right? Because oh, that is so true. Yeah. <laughs> so true. <laughs> and it just doing anything to not have to yeah. to face that. Yeah. And that's that's what's crushing, right? So the key in, in this is to learn to allow yourself to be human and to stop holding yourself to such unreasonable standards. Because when you stop doing that with yourself, you will stop doing it with others. And then others will be far more understanding when you make a mistake because you were, you were understanding of them being human, right? So we, we get what we give is what it comes down to. And we, you know, the weird part is, is that our need to be so perfectionistic and so perfect is a desire to try and feel loved and to finally be good enough, right? To, to be loved. And the, the sad irony of it is that it actually separates us and makes us less connectable, not, not less lovable, just less connectable, right? Because we are holding ourselves way the hell up here on a pedestal, right? And we're like, I'm up here and I'm perfect, and da, 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 da. but you can't be reached by everybody underneath you, right? And you're sitting there going, why aren't you being perfect with me? And da, da, da. There, it's a lot of, there's a lot of judgment in there. And so it makes it very hard to connect because of all the judgment and all the need for perfection and all of the demanding and all of the things. And we're doing it so much worse to ourselves than we do to anybody else, but nobody else knows that, right? So, and even if they do, it doesn't mean that it's easy to be around the perfectionism, right? So, you know, the key is to letting yourself be human because then you'll be a lot more understanding of others. Okay. And again, I go back to the art, make a mess, make a big mess. <laughs> okay. That's, that's where I finally gave my human piece was I was doing an art project and, you know, I was using a piece of paper towel to wipe off a wet paper towel to wipe off spray paint on a project that I was spray painting and the wiping down and spray painting and wiping down the last swipe a piece of the paper towel came off and I was like, ah, I could be angry at myself for, for leaving that, you know, for not changing out the paper towel and not doing this. And if I try and pick it off immediately, it's going to leave a gaping hole and I'll just know it's there and, or I could scrape it all down and try it, but it won't be right. And all of this stuff went through my head and it was in flash. And then I looked at it again and I went, cool texture. And I moved on. Anybody watching me from the outside would have seen three seconds of me, my eyes going wide and me freezing in place. And then I would have moved on, you know, <laughs> but all of those thoughts went through my brain in that three seconds. Right. So when you can say, cool texture, you, you're going to let yourself be human. Okay. A new mantra. Cool texture. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay. All right. So uh, let me see what else is in here. I mean, we already know that the not good enough's in there because that's inherent in the perfectionism. Let me see your inner child. Let's see what's going on in there. Oh, interesting. Okay. So your inner child is filthy dirty and she's filthy dirty because 
she, when she's inside, she's living in a dungeon. And when she's outside, since she doesn't get to bathe or do anything, she's like, well, screw it. I'm just going to play in mud puddles. And that's what she does. And she just jumps in the mud puddles and spreads mud in her hair and mud all over her clothes because she's going to be dirty anyway. So I might as well just get dirtier, right? That's just, she's, she is a fatalist. So it, it's, it's a fatalistic approach, right? She's, she's rebelling in the only way she has, which is I'll embrace it. Let's see how bad it can get. Right. <laughs> you know, hoping that eventually somebody's going to notice that she's crusty and clean her up. <laughs> but the mud keeps falling off and just turning to dust. And she's, oh, she's just not getting anywhere with it. Right. So this is, this is how your subconscious mind is operating, right? Your inner child and your subconscious mind are really interrelated. They're, they're not exactly one and the same, but they're, they're like kissing cousins, right? They're, they're connected in a big way. Right. So um, the thing I would say here is that this is a function of a lack of self-care, okay? The, for, for this piece, it is about not acknowledging when you're tired, not acknowledging when you're sleepy, not acknowledging, you know, just like pushing through everything you know, your bottom of your own priority list in a lot of cases, right? And everybody else gets your time, energy, money before you get yours, right? And I, I feel like you've got a better hold on the money thing than, than on everything else, but the time and energy is definitely problematic. So the encouragement here is to do simple things, you know, sleep when you're tired, eat when you're hungry, you know, um, Go to the bathroom when you have to, instead of waiting till you finish five more tasks. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, do that every day. I know, right? So, you know, just very small tasks to, to start to really pay attention to your own needs. Okay. You can't find your wants until you know your needs, right? Because you're not listening right now. Your, your body and your, your emotions and your energy are all trying to talk to you and you're not listening. So you won't find your wants until you can really acknowledge your needs. Because your wants don't feel safe to come to the surface until your needs are addressed. Okay. All right. Yeah. And she's saying, you need to play some more. You work all the time. You never play. She's really just like, oh my God. <laughs> she's just so frustrated with you. <laughs> she's like, all I have is a mud puddle. <laughs> yeah. It's oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have no idea in how many ways that is anyway in in all the ways that it speaks to me I mean I grew up living outside living fairly literally so when you brought that up and I did not have a lot of toys and so it was oftentimes mud <laughs> okay well then there you go <laughs> so this is I, I, I tell, yeah, I grew up as a, as a feral child, literally. Yeah. yeah. So she's still there. So she says, you have the money to buy me toys, buy me toys. <laughs> like, I want some freaking toys. <laughs> like, I'm tired of the mud puddle. <laughs> oh my God. You have no idea. Okay. <laughs> So, okay, let's see what else, anything else. Yeah, there's a too big, too much. So what too big, too much is about is, is like children should be seen and not heard and preferably not seen. 
right? You're, you're too loud. You're too, you know, everything, right? That's you're shamed for being a child effectively is what that one comes down to. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I, there was, um, I was told that exact phrase frequently. Yeah. Yeah. I'm same generation. So I get it. Um, yeah, the, okay. The, let me see here. Yeah. Big time, not important, not welcome, not wanted, not important function of the same stuff. Right. It's like, you know, I don't want you around. Therefore you don't count. You don't matter. You're not important. You know, go away. You bother me. Right. All of that energy is still there. Okay. Yeah. So that and the, and the, the not good enough piece, you know, they're all in there. Right. So these are all limiting factors on your ability to hold your own power, right? And so these are stories that need to be unwound. And they're, again, no quick fix on this one. They're, they're, it's a process. But, uh, you know, the stuff I've given you is a good start, okay? You know, the, the, the other piece is put yourself at the top of your own priority list. You, you cannot give from your emptiness. You have to give from your overflow, okay? You're already not pulling energy in from the outside world, you don't have much to give. Okay. So we're, you know, you're going to fix that, but then you're going to fill yourself up first before you do for others. That's your new rule. Okay. If you're tired, if you're hungry, if you have to pee, if you have to, you know, if you need a, a, a break because you're just overdone, if your energy is going buzz, 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 time to walk away, right? Take care of yourself before you take care of other people. If you feel like you're pushing through, you're doing the wrong thing. Okay. All right. So coming down into the second chakra. Okay. So the energy is running here. It feels like it runs in a dominant position. Um. Mm, feels like it runs back and forth dominant and submissive so it feels like there's there's feels like sexually there's dominant and submissive energy happening in your bedroom so like switch right and that that is actually a function of the so the thing about dominance and submission, and I've spent a fair amount of time in that world, so I can speak intelligently about it. The thing about it is that it is a desire to be connected at a deeper level through those pathways. However, it, while it has a level of intimacy, it is missing the, another piece of the intimacy. So what you're seeking is union and what you're getting is codependent dynamic back and forth. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. So the, the piece that you're seeking is not going to come through that venue. However, you're not going to be able to access it until you open your heart chakra. So it's a good substitute in the interim. Okay, but you need to recognize it's a substitute and not a solution. Okay, okay. so nothing wrong with it, just it's not going to get you ultimately where you want to go. Okay, so the when you open the heart chakra and you come at your sexuality through there, there is an intimacy piece that happens through kink, right? There's an intimacy piece that is in there through, through caretaking and, and the whole, you know, uh, language, you know what I'm talking about. I right? do. I you know, do. What you're you know what I'm about. talking about. And so there's a, there's a piece in there that is the, that is the pathway to what you're seeking to that union place. 
Okay. But it has to happen both directions at the same time. Not one and one, one gives, one receives, right? Has to happen both directions at the same time. And it has to happen with an open heart on both parties. And so it's going to need a shift in order for that to, to be what it is that you're seeking. Okay. And then there's an energetic connection and the whole thing. Tantra is the pathway that you're looking for. Okay. So, um, okay. What else? Let me take a look. Okay. So in the addictions area, I'm seeing work. So workaholic, right? And the reason that this is there right now is because it is the only place in which you feel fully defined. And it, it because de defined is your safety and comfort space. That's why you're leaning into that so hard. Okay. Uh, when you can start to define in other areas, it will resolve of its own accord. Okay. But because everything else is so up in the air right now, it's, it's really become of an addiction type focus. It's a, you know, I, I have to have this as the only place where I am safely defined. Right. So there's that. Let's see here. What else? Yeah, addiction attachment, same idea for you on this one. Not the same thing in overall, but that's what it is for you. Anything else? Hold on. You have a daughter? Uh -huh. Yeah. So she's the other place where you've got this at attachment thing going on that you, you're, you're defining yourself through her. There's a, a way in which the the way that she comes out, right? The way that not like come the way that she turns out, right? Her her beingness is you're seeing it as a reflection of you. And that's not a very healthy place for either one of you, just so you know. Because you don't know who you are, you're defining yourself through her, and that's not fair to her. And very hard to live up to, just so you know. So I would really seriously pull back hard on that and refocus on yourself because it, the dynamic is not working in, in your relationship right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else here? No. Okay. Moving down into the first chakra, just in here. Okay, we already know about the grounding issue. Let me see. There's just nothing coming up here. Hold on. Part of this is part of this is what you said to me before about not wanting to ground. Um, so here's the thing: unless you are on the express train, which you'll know if you you know, when that happens, trust me, you know, unless you're on the express train spiritually, you definitely want to be grounding. Okay. Centering is useful, but grounding. So we make a circuit between earth and sky through our bodies. And that's what gives us access to lots of energy, right? Unless you're on the express train where you are shifting and changing so fast that you aren't the same person from one day or one week to the next, then you should be grounding unless you're moving physically. Okay. Grounding is a great way to one, get more energy and two, to stay more calm because the earth is inherently calm. Okay. And so it helps with the hypervigilance and it helps with the meditation and helps with a lot of stuff. Okay. And it, we are physical beings with spiritual centers, right? With spiritual souls. And if you're not connecting to the earth, your, your physical being is losing a connection to nature, 
right? And so the, the kinesthetic information that's available through the earth is not coming in because you're not grounding. So you're missing a lot of information, right? So, you know, like you just know you don't want to be someplace and then an earthquake happens and the ceiling falls in, that, that sort of thing. That is a kinesthetic thing that your body is saying, hey, this is going to happen. You need to move, right? It's why when they had that uh, tsunami in Thailand all, all those years ago, that they said they only found humans. They, they didn't find any animals because the animals all left because they knew, right? Yeah. They didn't know. They didn't know why. They just knew they didn't want to be there, right? <laughs> you know, that's the thing. So this is why it's important to ground. Okay. So that said, yeah, fears around safety and security showing up, not surprising, hypervigilance, right? That's, but that's all part and parcel to the process of everything we've talked about. Okay. And then let me see. Okay. You have a son too? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm, I'm seeing that hold on, hold on let me look because I was, I was not going to bother with the family tableau since I talked to you about your daughter, but they're like, nope, there's a son too. We got to talk about it. I'm like, okay. So, <laughs> all right, I got it. Let me take a look here. Hold on. Okay. So what I'm seeing is that in the family tableau, your daughter is in the room, your son is not. And so, you know, I, I always see it as a kitchen right? And so you're sitting at the kitchen table, your husband's washing the dishes and your daughter is on the far side of the room looking at you, but your son is not in the room. And so what that says is that he separated himself. So does that make sense to you? It does. I think that, um, and I'm holding on. Yeah. And that's actually causing the separation to be more significant, just so you know. So part of it is the rebellion against the holding on. Okay. It's the, the grabbiness energy. It's like sort of energy where he's like trying to push it away. And so if you stop holding on, if you let go and you allow, there is a chance for it to come back. But if you keep holding on, it's just, going to be more of him breaking away, breaking away, breaking away, because he's resisting the, the holding on energy. It's like, it's like when you try to grab somebody physically, right? The first thing they're going to do, whether they want to be there or not, is they're going to try and break free of, free of being held on to, right? Because they're like, I don't, I feel trapped, right? Okay. Is that everything with this? Yes, that's everything with that. And then the, let's look at the tribe. So I see like two, sometimes three, sometimes more solidly three. It's weird because initially it was like in and out, in and out. And, but then yes, solidly three people, friends in your life, women, hardcore warrior women who are around you. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. to a certain extent yeah okay so the thing to be careful of when you have warrior women as friends is that the minute they see vulnerability they're going to poke the crap out of it and say look you've got this vulnerability you you're soft here you're soft here you should you should firm up and harden up and da, 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 da. that's warrior love because they're like trying to prepare you for a for battle right and then anytime they see a bit of softness they're going to poke the crap out of it until you harden it up because that's how you stay safe in warrior world okay so you got to be very careful what you, how vulnerable you get with warrior women, because they often have no way of being with vulnerability and they will just try to bang on you till you harden up again, because that's what they're comfortable with. Okay. So when you choose 
when you start to do this path, you know, especially the de-armoring the heart piece, you definitely want to be conscious about who you choose to share the, the journey with because you want to have a positive experience of it. And you're only going to have that if you don't have people who are banging on you. Okay. Because you can't open your heart and get banged on at the same time that that doesn't work. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see here. All right, let's look at the manifestation bubble. Okay, your manifestation bubble is unimpacted by all the blocks that we've talked about, which is really good. I don't know how you did that. Well, let me laugh. Let me find out because I want to know for my other clients. <laughs> <laughs> So let me, let me see. Mm, you did it the same way you do your mask. You just put it into the, you put it, you put your manifestation into your mask and you ran the manifestation right through that mask of perfection. That's how you managed to do it. That's impressive. That's some serious energetic, you know, uh, adeptness. Damn, that's damn fine. That's some good, good magic there. So, but what that says is that as you, as you dismantle that mask, you're going to need to move that manifestation energy into your actual self. And so, um, are you anywhere close to retiring? Yes. Okay. So I would probably do the identity work after you retire, just so that it doesn't impact your income because of how it's structurally created in your energy field right now. Because when you, when you dismantle that identity stuff, the manifestation pathway that you've created for yourself is going to fall down with it. And so better to do the identity work after you retire. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, let me, let me look at your business in relation to this. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. If you put someone else in charge of your business, like at CEO level, right? Then you wouldn't have to worry about it. But right now, because you are in control, it is your business is actually a, an extension of your own energy field and will be impacted by anything you do. But if you put somebody else in control, you would withdraw your energy enough that that would not be the case. Just so you know. Okay. Um, you would hate it, but it would work. So it's a natural thing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, let's see here. Anything else I need to know? No. Okay. Do you have any questions before we go into the sum up section? No, I mean, there's a lot, obviously. Um, <laughs> so that's why uh, these are so long is because they're so in depth. Yeah. And yeah, but right now I really don't. Okay. All right. So Right now you feel exhausted. So I'm gonna actually walk you through the tree meditation because I want you to get some energy through before we sum this up so that you can ha hold it because it feels like it's, it, it's been a lot for you, okay? Right. So um, close your eyes and I want you to imagine branches coming up out of the top of your head into the sky and you can feel the energy of the sun on your leaves and those leaves are pulling in the energy of the sun and pulling them into the tree branches and down into your head, cycling down all the way through your body to the base of your body, and then circling back up and out again. So coming down your back or your front, whichever way you, you imagined it, and then going back out the other side and heading back up into the sky taking with it all spent and stuck energy. 
And just see that circuit running for a minute. Okay. And now we're going to leave that moving, leave that going. And now we're going to focus on your feet. And you're going to feel your feet sending roots out into the ground, drawing in nutrients and moisture from the soil, drawing in energy and bringing it up through your feet, up through your body to the tip of your head, and then cycling back down again the other side of your body and bringing with it all stuck and spent energy and going back down and out into the ground again. I'm gonna let these two circuits run for a few minutes here. Okay, so go ahead and open your eyes, leave those running, because that's how we should be connected all the time. Okay, feel a little more energized now? Uh -huh. Good, okay. Yeah, this is why your energy gets low, is because you weren't connected, okay? Reconnect your crown chakra, you just shut it down again. Okay, there you go. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of different things and they're all interrelated, okay? So the, the lack of trust in the universe is a, is a big one for you, right? And then the heart chakra is the other issue that's, that's big and the, the hypervigilance pieces, which is related to all of the rest of it right? They're all connected. Those are your themes, right? And so the, there is, so you can do these in individual sections or you can do them all together. I would highly recommend doing them all together just because there it's a, it's a tapestry of coping mechanisms. And so it's much easier to unravel them all at once than it is to try and pull a strand at a time because they, they snag on other things, right? So, you know, you could go out and find individual courses on, you know, opening the heart and, you know, developing your trust in the universe and doing the, the, oh, my brain just went, what was the third thing? There was a third thing. My brain just went, nope the manifestation no that's not it the whoops the third thing we were just talking about it <laughs> my brain is just gone the opening the heart opening the heart trusting the universe oh the the identity issue stuff right the yeah the the opening to being seen and being seen as your authentic self and all of that right yeah i knew what i was talking about really brain brain no worky okay so you know all of that so you could do that or you could do it all at once and you know you can do individual classes and hope that they intersect um, i do have classes that will walk you through all of that just so you know so okay. i have an entire s system that is designed to deal with everything we talked about. Okay. So there, you know, it is on the website and, you know, I'm happy to talk to you about it. If you want to talk about it, the, the programs that you'd be looking at, the ones that are relevant is welcome to the woo followed by woo squared. It takes four months for welcome to the woo. And that I guarantee you will cut your stress levels in half in four months or your money back. That's guaranteed. And it, it is dealing with all of these, the, the fear, anxiety, worry, dread, self-doubt, inner and outer judgment, and helping you to build a foundation of self-support and courage. And it does it not just mental, emotional, but it also does it energetic. So we're doing things around how do you clear your energy field? How do you hold your energy field? How do you manage your energy field? How do you protect your energy field? How do you protect your home? How do you talk to your guides? How do you do basic divination? You know, all of these things in addition to the personal growth and, and mental stuff. 
right? Um, it is one of the most transformational programs you'll ever experience. People go in as one person, they come out as somebody else, and they're like, holy crap, I can't even imagine thinking about things the way that I came in when I started, right? It changes you, right? It, it lifts you out of, it, it gets the basic trauma gone, right? That's the goal, you know, because we learn how to defend ourselves when we're in trauma. You know, it's, it's all about hypervigilance. It's all about being able to anticipate where the next shoe is going to drop, right? And it sets that container of expectation that life is going to suck, right? And so this unwinds that. It gives you the bandwidth to grow because right now your brain is like, la, 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 la. there's no room for any growth because your brain is so busy, like shouting at you all the time, right? The monkey mind is screeching constantly right? So when you finish that, and then you have the chance to solidify the container, remember, we talked about the container stretching, you have a chance to solidify the container in the second program. And so okay. that next program is a year long, it takes, a, you know, it's, it's dealing with huge amounts of stuff. It's claim your space and set your boundaries and own your power and internalize your sense of value and learn how to love yourself. We also empty the well of rage, we work on law of attraction, we work on and basic uh, energetic skills that you can then use in your life as well. So it's a huge amount of stuff, right? So the, 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 you will never ever have anybody say there wasn't enough content in my courses. <laughs> <laughs> However, it is designed to be done in 15 minutes a day on the toilet, because I know how your time is, right? That is, that is how it's designed to be done. So they, they, both the courses have a huge amount of content, but it's not overwhelming. So, but it will get you through, it will put you on that express train and you will be through faster than you can possibly imagine that your life could change. It will change. And we also work in inherently on that, figuring out what you want. It's one of the things that we do in the program, because that's pretty common for my, my people is that they don't know who they are. They don't know what they want. They, they have lost the ability to dream. They're just stuck. And so that's, that's what I do. And so, and you know, it's because that's who I was, right? So, so this was all stuff I wrote because I went through it. It took me 25 years to get through all this work. And, you know, I've got it down to, to, you know, a, a year and a half for the first like 15 years of work and then another year for the other 10. So not too shabby. Right, you know, right. You know, but I had to figure out what all the problems were in order to fix them. So, you know, I'm just taking out the empty space, right? So it's, it's not overwhelming. It's just I'm taking out all the empty space of trying to figure out what the problem is and then trying to find a solution that actually works. And so when you take those out, the, the work that you do is very small because you're, you spend so much time trying to figure everything out, right? So right. there's that. Yeah. Oh, my nose is itching again. It's that whole, oh, I'm gonna nope, not going to sneeze. Just going to itch. Okay. Noted. Anyway, so I, I'll, I'll leave you with that. You can think about it. And, you know, if you want to sit and talk about it, we can absolutely sit and talk about it. I just feel like right now you're, you, you got so much from the read and there was so much that came up and you're kind of stirred up. I don't want you to make any decisions when you're stirred up. I want you to be in a really solid place to make a decision. Uh -huh. So, you know, you can see it on the website. You can take a look at it. You can look at it at your leisure. I will tell you the first course is $29.97 for the course. That's for the four months. It's a small group. It's no more than 15 people in the group right now. I think there's like four in the group that's open right now. So there's a lot of personalized attention and we've got a discussion group in between. So you basically are, are with me the whole four months. Right. Okay. And, um, so, you know, take a look at it, see what it covers, see if it feels right to you, sit with it. I would say, you know, my, my strong suggestion is to make a decision within a week yeah. because otherwise, you know, all the energy sort of drains out if you don't. Right. Okay. So, but, you know, take a look at it and, okay you know, you'll get a copy of this just to wrap up. How are you feeling right now? Yeah. I mean, I, I have to admit that it is a little bit overwhelming. It touched on so many things that were so incredibly accurate and, and it kind of, I've had these pieces come to me, but it kind of came together in a more 
organized cohesive way, I guess, and like the interconnectedness now is starting to dawn on me, right? And so I kind of knew all these pieces. I just want to share with you that the whole being stabbed in the back thing, since I was a very young child, there's been one area in my back on my right side that if somebody touched it or put pressure on it or would like literally send me through the roof. I had CT scans and MRI scans and um, never knew just one pinpoint area on my back. And to know that that's where that came from is just insane. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. Yeah, like if you if somebody put any pressure on it, two fingers on it would literally send me through the roof. So anyway, it is interesting. So yeah, over overwhelmed, realizing that I do need to, um, and I've been looking for a way to go forward, right? Like, and I knew it would come if I just listened. I knew that there was going to be a path and it sounds like this is the path and I've been looking for it. And so yeah, I'm, a, I'm, it gives me hope and excitement because I've been in that dark fog for a long time. I mean, I've, I've opened up, but then it was like, now what? And now I see what? So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. It was great to meet you. And I'm, yes, Tim. I hope to be working with you in the future. Absolutely. Thanks, Kelly. All right, hon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's it for this week's episode. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget, what you focus on is what expands, and what you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh, 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 oh